Hey guys, what is going on? It is XCKJ here, and today we're going to be talking about how to play off tank. This is a very important role to talk about. I don't think it's as straightforward as a lot of people um, seem to think that it is, or it's not as straightforward as the other roles are. That's a better way of putting it. Um, but before we do get into the video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps all, a lot for me um, in the algorithm and everything like that. So thank you guys. So what makes an off tank an off tank? I think that there's four things that make an off tank an off tank. First off, of course, it's health, uh, CC, damage, and shields. Uh, the two off tanks that we're going to focus on mainly today is Khan and Ash. I'm going to focus on them because Ash is a more aggressive off tank where Khan is more passive but still has a potential to be very offensive without a doubt, especially if he has his ult, um, depending on the map. We are right now, I'm going to go to an overview of Serpent's Beach and just kind of talk about exactly what flanks are going to be holding, how a game of Serpent's Beach would look out in the ideal world. Of course, people are going to say that uh, you know there's certain situations where this specific thing won't work out, but for general... If you're just trying to learn the role and figure things out, this is going to be very helpful for you and even for an experienced player to kind of just be like, hmm, I wonder what other people are doing differently. Um, this is just me watching a lot of other pro players and seeing exactly what they do and even a little bit of pro Overwatch players, how they play off tank and taking some of that and bringing it into this game um, because some stuff can still uh, go hand in hand. So... Here we are on Serpent's Beach. Let's assume that we are on this side right here and the enemies are on this side right here. So the game starts and you're going to first assess who's on their team. So if they have snipers, uh, you'll maybe deal with it a little bit differently than most damages. But for the most part, you're going to be doing the exact same thing. So when you first initially push up, you decide whether you want to hold the sundial side, which is this side, or uh, the fall side, or um, stair side, or whatever you want to call it. Um, I like to typically go on the uh, waterfall side, just because um, this is where people get onto both of the bridges that shoot over the point. They have places where they can shoot onto the point from here, and let's say that they're playing Kinesa or something like that, they can always um, come straight from here and then flash up to this sniper's nest, which is not a good spot because, I mean, it is a very strong spot, especially when you're getting pushed on, but um, for right in when you're capping the point they don't have a perfect shot and also then your back line is safe from the damage as well um, now you have to remember that also they can have their flank push this way it just completely ignore you and then come around and start shooting onto your back line so with all that being said your main goal first off is going to be you're going to come right here just stand right over here and then assess the situation if you see three or four people from their team also went over onto this side then let's say for instance you're playing ash you can just try to push up as far as you possibly can on them with your team supporting you just chilling right back here and maybe even you got your tank right here or somewhere around that area trying to push your healer is kind of standing somewhere around this area right so you're going to be able to come all the way up to this mid area and try to push push this way now with all that happening your flank their flank could be coming around this way so the reason why you want to stand here and you don't just want to immediately just go all right here i go i'm just going to go straight into their enemy team because you would be able to survive doing that um depending on who you're playing of course maybe if you're playing con you want to play a little bit more passively a little bit more defensively um and if you're playing somebody like ash you're going to be playing more offensively um, but the reason why you don't want to push up is just in case let's say that the flank does get around and he pushes this way right um then your healer, which unless he's stacked right on top of the team, which he might be, um, your healer will be exposed to getting flanked and your damages will be exposed. And what happens if their off tank also push and you're just pushing one damage? Let's say your entire team is pushing one damage right here while the rest of the team flanks around here and you're solo queued. You're, you're not able to talk to the people on your team. Uh, well, I mean, you could try to communicate with them, but um, you're assuming that they are not, they are playing well, but they're not playing as smart as they possibly could be playing so flanks around right here they're just standing right here your healer or they're standing right here something like that that's typically where the healer is going to be um, moving around from that area and then the off tank and the flank are just able to push right into them and kill your entire back line while you just killed one damage you turn around your damage 
your damage, your healer, and uh, your tank is now getting killed. And you're just standing there as an off tank in their back line. Now you're going to have to go get yourself killed so that way you don't trickle. So the main thing that you're going to want to do here is simply just hang out right here, right down here. Wait, make sure that you see a couple people from their team. Even if you see like two or three people from their team and you know that your team is also coming with you on the waterfall side. Um, you just push straight up with them. And uh, yeah, that's that's one of the first things that you can be doing. Now, let's say that you're playing somebody more passively, con, right? And you're not exactly sure what they're going to do. Uh, maybe you're on, you have your ult, you've already done 1-1, one, one. you first, at first just tried to zone them off up here. Another nice thing about standing up here is if you don't push straight down, you could just stand on top of the bridge, right? And then you could just shoot down onto a point and see wherever the heck they're going. And then once you get a pick or once something happens, you see like somebody's out of place, you can immediately push down this way you can push down the mid you can even go down this way very quickly right um so it's a great spot to be standing i love even when i'm playing damages i love standing on top of this bridge that's just a little side note let's say you're playing con now right and uh the point is you have your ult um you're going on to you, you've ended the round with your ult so what you're going to do now is you're in a very advantageous position because con has a very strong ult so you're going to just call for your team to do because you're on you're on this side down here so you're going to call for your team to do a right flank you're going to go to dial side and as you go to dial side you can push straight up and honestly at this point since you have your ult you can push all the way down now what you're going to be able to do when you push all the way down is pressure their entire team they have to answer you because their healer is going to be whether their healer's here their healer's here um, or even if their healer is standing really far back, even if they're there, you are threatening their healer um, with your ult. You're threatening any of their damages with their ult, and then you're just going to be able to push super hard on them because you have an ult. You're going to be able to deal with that person quickly, All right? In in the early parts, even if they let's say they run down your team here, you called for a flank this way, so your entire team is down this way now. So they're going to come around. They're going to be right here. Your tank's going to be on the point probably or they're going to have push with you hopefully they push with you um but even if your point tank is right on the point right maybe he's fighting um hopefully your healer is standing somewhere right around here you got your damages over here with you so you're not going to lose anything from this you're going to have your ult just be able to chuck them straight off the edge and then apply pressure now you're just going to keep on standing in this spot you maybe can get to come up here just zone them off get people to do some demounts very uh strong but you definitely do not as an off tank i see this all the time this is this is basically can be summed up everything i just said can be summed up in one thing playing the off tank does not mean that your tank is right here and you stand right here and then when your tank dies you go and stand on the point uh, i see people doing that way too much and it can be effective sometimes because you know that the flank is going to come and try to kill your healer, right? So you're going to be standing right back here, and then maybe you get a kill on their healer. I mean, maybe you get a kill on their flank, maybe you don't. But as far as you being able to help your team get an advantage and then cap the point, where this may be effective, if let's say you're mid-round, you know, you have your ult, everybody's trickling back, you just want to play safe and keep your team alive, then sure, maybe this is a good play to do. But even still, you're better off going up on top of the bridge and just poking from there or something. I just see all the time off tanks stacking on the point or just stacking right behind the points, and I just don't see it as a very effective way of playing off tank. I think for your win rate, it was going to see a lot more if you're playing a very aggressive off tank or you're just zoning off parts of the map that like, if you see a damage, for instance, and he's just doing the same exact thing over and over again, then try to put pressure on that point. Try to be the one to kill the healer. You have a lot of survivability. You're a tank. Um, you can... You can do stupid things and get away with that without getting your team punished too hard. Whereas your flank or somebody like that, if they they make a mistake, they're going to die. You make a mistake and you have a little bit more forgiving of a role to play. Um, but you definitely can play a super, super aggressive role. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I try to upload a few paladins videos a week so um yeah make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of that thanks so much for watching to the end of the video and let me know do you think that this was helpful um did you agree with 
what I was saying, disagree with what I was saying. I love to hear what you guys have to think, uh, positive or negative. But anyway, see you guys in the next video. Peace.